You can see what I've got here, I think. I'm pretty sure this is my completed shape. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Um, I have all the different kinds of sample means listed on the vertical axis, right? You can see my range is from one and a half to five and a half. One and a half is the lowest I can possibly get because those are the smallest two numbers in my population. Five and a half is the biggest for the reverse reason, okay? And there's the distribution. And one of the lovely things about this is if you just turn your head a little bit, surprise, surprise, the normal distribution because that's exactly what you get whenever you look at a population and there's some element of randomness in there. So, the last thing we now want to work out is, and it's the most amount of work mathematically, but you guys can do it, is now I want to work out, I just have enough space to squeeze it in over here. You've worked out, number one, all the samples. Number two, you've worked out the means for all the samples, the sample means. Okay. Um, number three, you now have a picture of what they look like, what the distribution is. Okay. Fourth and last, and this is going to sound confusing. We now want to work out the mean of the sample means. Let me say that again. Okay. You have a whole bunch of sample means all represented over here. I want to find out the mean of all 15 of them. Okay. If you have 15 scores of any kind, how do you work out their mean? Yeah, very good. If you have 15 scores, you add up the 15 scores and then you divide by 15. Okay? Now you can read quickly off this. You don't have to do it 15 times because there's double ups along the way. Right? So have a look. You can see um, there's five and a half. We mentioned that one. That only happens once. Then there's five. But then when you get to four and a half, it happens twice. So therefore I'm going to say I'll do four and a half twice. And I'll do four how many times? Look, also twice. If I've calculated correctly, there is one and only one mean that happens three times, which is? So I'm going to multiply that one by three, and then I'm going to keep going. This is my way of adding up all the means. Does that make sense? So I'll finish off what I've got here. Now, I've added up all 15 by the time I hit equals on the calculator there. But I want not the sum of all those, I want the average, the mean of all those. So what am I going to do? Divide by 15. Don't forget, it's the whole thing, the sum, right? Whoops. There you go. Okay, so go ahead. 3.5. Now, I just wanted you to make sure. Now, Remember, this is the last thing I'm going to say and we're going to get going on 11A. Remember we observed when we turned our heads sideways, oh, this is, the, this is the normal distribution, isn't it? The normal distribution, I want you to think all the way back to the start of DS5. I introduced the normal distribution and I said it had a bunch of characteristics. Do you remember what the characteristics were? Some are easy to remember and some are hard. Okay, so you went straight to the hard one. Well, the one that's relevant, so good job, okay? We said this is the normal distribution. Number one, it's it's symmetrical. Okay. Number two, it's got that bell kind of curve shape, right? But one of the things which is not mentioned frequently is on a on a perfect normal distribution, the mean and the mode and the median are all the same value, right? And you guys can all see this is obviously the mode. Look, it happens the most frequently, right? Why is it the median? Why is it the median? Look, it's bang, it's right smack bang in the middle, right? Which means that even without computing, because it's the perfect normal distribution, you can know the mean, mode, and median are all three and a half. 